Hear the word of Jehovah, O sons of Israel. For Jehovah has a legal case with the inhabitants of the land. What's going on, you guys? It is March the 26th, 2015. Had another pretty interesting day, as I usually do. Had a pretty, I don't know, a lengthy, not too lengthy, conversation with the coworker today, and it was a very good one. Uh, I lasted maybe 15, 20 minutes, but we talked about a whole bunch of things. And over our conversation, you could tell that we both uh, disagreed about a lot of things, but. Not, uh, another thing you could tell is that we both also had thought about these various things. These things that um, most people these days seem to be scared to think about, scared to discuss, scared to articulate in any way. But I, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. I thought it was awesome. Uh, I do like having those conversations with people who disagree with me. That way, I feel like at the end of the conversation, you know what I'm saying, we both can walk away with a little bit more. We're a little bit stronger. To me, that's the uh, that's the name of the game is information. Because that equals strength. Anyways, like I was reading, this one is out of Hosea. Hosea 4. Verse six is actually the the um, the main, I guess, the most popular uh, line out of it. But anyways, here I'm gonna go ahead and read this passage for you real quick. Like I said, hear the word of Jehovah, O sons of Israel, for Jehovah has a legal case here. In this, uh, in, in with the inhabitants of the land. Sorry about that. For there is no truth, nor loving kindness, nor knowledge of God in the land. Does that sound familiar? There are the pronouncing of curses and the practicing of deception. And murdering and stealing and the committing of adultery. I said adultery. That have broken forth and acts of bloodshed have touched other acts of bloodshed. Chicago, Detroit, D.C. Same with this. Uh, that is why the land will mourn. And every inhabitant in it will have to fade away with the wild beast of the field and with the flying creature of the heavens. And even the fishes in the sea will be gathered in death. Said, However, let no man contend, neither let a man reprove, as your people are like those who are contending against a priest. See what I'm saying? Basically, I mean, he pretty much said, your people are the people who think so much that people tell them they think too much. And people in these priesthoods might tell them, hey, you think too much, but you know what? Those are your people. At least that's, that's the way I interpret it. And it goes on to say, and you will certainly stumble in the daytime, uh, obviously. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's pretty true. Um, anyways, he say, and he will certainly stumble in the daytime. And even a prophet must stumble with you as at night. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I kind of took that as, as um, you know what I'm saying? Even a, even a person who does know, does think about these things, even he's going to have to suffer the consequences with you of, the ignorance, because your ignorance is going to drag him with you, inevitably. Um, 
and I will put your, and then he goes on to say, and he said, man, he said, I will put your mother to silence. Now, that sounds pretty, um, I guess you would say threatening or is very sternly put when he says, I will put your mother to silence. My people will certainly be silent. This is this is the famous line. Actually, this line is um, not the most popular. You know how they kind of change up the wording, but in this in this writing, it says, "My people will certainly be silent because there is no knowledge." Now, in different books, the line might read, um, "My people will perish due to lack of knowledge," or "My people are destroyed." Due to lack of knowledge, but inevitably, it pretty much obviously means the same thing. That it's because of the lack of knowledge that you're going down, just like I said, you're going down with all the people that you're going to drag with you. All right, this is what he's saying to you. And he goes a little bit further. He says, because the knowledge is what you yourself have rejected he said I shall also reject you from serving as a priest to me now uh, he said he said that in a way that you can kind of imply that he was talking to anybody and everybody he said it doesn't matter if you're a priest or you you think you're the um, best teacher up in your public school perhaps and maybe you are he said, it doesn't matter if you reject, like say if you're one of those people who uh, you have to get up in arms or uh, when someone starts stating the facts, you, you, you run away from it. You try to make it an emotional thing or you run away from the topic. These days they're called liberals. They're not liberal. Um, a lot of that crowd. A lot of this crowd might consider themselves Christians at the same time you're not. You're not Christians. And obviously, they wrote right here in the book, um, although you might be Christians, if you are Christians, you're certainly going to pull down the rest of the Christians with you because you simply reject the idea of even having a debate, trying to get to the bottom of what this is obviously describing. To where you don't want to know, you don't want to hear, like, if I say Obama's a homosexual, uh, for example... You'd be like, oh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. That's exactly what he's describing right here. You could go ahead and do some research and try to prove me wrong and say, oh, wait, no, I did enough research. And you know what? This is, this is These are all the facts that prove that you're wrong. He's not a homosexual. But you know what? You're not going to do that. You know what you're going to do is you're going to run away from it. You're going to run away just like I said right here in the book. So you're not even going to think about it. You're not going to want to debate anybody. You're not going to want to debate anybody if he's... Uh, he doesn't, he's not under our, these supposed country's laws. He's not even supposed to be the president. Um, all sorts of things. Bo Bergdahl, all sorts of things. Obamacare. I mean, is this, uh, I'm going to cover a little bit more of that later, but we're going to get into Nathan Alonzo. Don't you worry, we're about to get into Nathan Alonzo, but uh, let's go ahead and finish this. Well, like I said, because the knowledge is what you yourself have rejected, I also reject you from serving as priest to me. And it gets worse. And because you keep forgetting the law of your God, I shall forget your sons, even I. In proportion to the multitude of them, so they have sinned against me. My own glory they have exchanged for mere dishonor. That means it don't matter if they get rich. It don't matter if they live like Donald Trump. They're running away from information in order to suit their needs. They're running away from the power that they could be harnessing for the cause of Christ. Running away from it. And I'm talking specifically to the Christians who... Who do this there's a lot of sort of people who run away from information and, and are scared and i don't blame them because you know what they're probably following the wrong thing so i would be scared too if i was following the wrong thing i'd be like oh no oh god no i'd be running away but if you supposedly christian if you supposedly 
going to a church. You wouldn't be scared of that kind of information, would you? And your sons wouldn't have to, uh, you know, basically be doomed. Uh, he said, the sin of my people is what they keep devouring. And to their error, they keep lifting up their soul. Or so they think. And it will have to become for the people the same as for the priest. Like he said, you know, that person who says uh, he's a priest, but he doesn't even want to think about anything or discuss anything or debate anything or have an opinion like a man would. Um, he says, man, I'm going to treat the people just the same, even even if you're not a priest. Just run away from information. He said, and I shall certainly hold an accounting against them for their ways. Certainly, he said, I will certainly hold accounting. And their dealings, and I shall bring back upon them. I'm saying, he, he said, you're going to pay in full, basically. You're going to pay in full. And they will actually eat. But not get satisfied. That sounds familiar, huh? I mean, diabetes. They will actually treat women as harlots, but they will not increase. Uh, yeah, it's happening. Because they have left off paying regard to Jehovah himself. And that's where we're going to end it. Because obviously, it keeps going. You see where I'm going with that? Even if you're a smart, smarty pants and you think you're all smart and you know everything, Guess what? Try to uh, try to have a conversation, especially I mean, well, you know, with, with anyone, young kids these days, you'd be surprised what they know or what they hear and see. Old people, I love listening to old people because it's almost like they almost understand what I understand about the political scene and things like that. But you can't run away from these debates. You can't be like, oh, I know everything and and I'm not gonna listen to you. He's not a homosexual. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't hate America. Just because I think so and I believe so. I'm not going to look into it. I'm not going to try to prove you wrong, but uh, you're wrong and I'm not going to even look into it. Now, before I have to end this video, I do have to make a shout out. I would like to redirect your attention to a video on E.T. Williams' channel. He just put it up very recently. Uh, so, you know, I forgot what it's called, but you know what? Actually, it's basically the, the title of it is Effing. Uh, traitors, cowards, and, you know, people who hate America, you're going to find it. It's very recent. And I would like to put my response to that video, if I could, very briefly. My response is this. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, that is exactly how it's going to go down. Yes, that's my response. I like that. Um, speaking of which, to go ahead and end this video, Nathan Alonso, uh, I am your enemy, by the way. You made me that through your actions and how you choose to spend money. Um, I will continue to be your enemy pretty much forever and ever until you come to my face and you apologize because if, like I said, I don't know any of your policies. Ba I barely know your name. I know that you're pushing diabetes. But anyways, if you come to me and apologize to me for what your actions indirectly have done, and then also tell me what your opinion of Obama, President Obama is, then I will literally come work for you for nothing. I'll voluntarily work for you. If you can do this, um, and you have a real, actual opinion that you could tell me about President Obama, and I bet you don't because you're a Democrat, and I bet you love Castro, and you're like this with him. And because Castro is like this with Obama as well, uh, I bet you you do not have an opinion. But if you do have an opinion, come tell me what it is, and we're going to discuss it. And then I'll work for you for free, forever. I mean, just make sure that you can feed me some bread from time to time. But until then, I'm your enemy. All right? Uh, good night. Good night, baby.